All right, hello and welcome to a new week. Uh, I'm going to keep these slides quite short. There's a, not a whole lot to go through, so this lecture and the next one will be very brief, which will give you more time to study for your midterm. So you are welcome. Let us get started and talk about this thing called exceptions, which is the last major piece of syntax in C++ that you have not yet learned. So really, you are about to be uh, masters of the C++ language after this. You will be professionals. All right, so let's get started. And here is a meme that you will laugh at once I'm done with these slides, I promise. OK, so let's get started. And here's my example. Let us pretend that we're writing a division function. OK, so uh, writing a function that just performs division for no good reason. It's like, uh, let's do integer division. Int divide, uh, I don't know, int numerator by a denominator, right? Something like that. And so we're going to go and like return num over denom. Yeah. Right. And you know that this could go wrong. It can give us a runtime error, in fact, if the denominator was zero. So we don't like that that will crash the program. We don't want to crash the program when the user gives us a bad denominator divisor. That's probably the right word, right? Uh, I think it's dividend and divisor. Let's, let's replace those. Why not? So that's the, the cool terminology. OK, so that's what we're going to return. And we don't want this to ever be 0. OK, if it was, we're, we will crash the program. OK, so we would like to somehow alert the user when they gave us a bad value, they did something stupid. OK, and so uh, we would like to somehow handle this error. OK, like the user gave us a 0. We don't want to crash the program. We want to do something with it. OK. So let's let me at least get you started with this. Divide at cpp, I guess. And so we want uh, int divide, int dividend, int divisor, and we return dividend over divisor. Okay. So this can go wrong because if we get two numbers from the user, n and m, let's say. Uh, Okay, now we have them. Let us see out uh, uh, n divided by m is, and then we can use our function divide with n and uh, uh, m. Okay. So a lot of the time, this function is going to work right. But sometimes it will not. So we got your 42 and 2. Yeah, it'll totally work. Uh, but 42 and 0, oh man, floating point exception, core dumped. This is a runtime error. Yeah. So we didn't like that. And so we would like to both alert the user that they did something stupid and also uh, potentially handle the error as well to like make it so that it doesn't crash the program when the user gives us a bad divisor. OK, how do we do that? Uh, well, we can use a bunch of if statements, because we could just do that. To handle all the errors in the world. That's totally possible. Depending on the error, like this one's maybe pretty easy. We can just be like, okay, if divisor is equal to zero, then do something with that fact uh, and like don't return this bad thing. But the issue is, if you do that here, like the person who called this function didn't know that there was something wrong. So maybe both up here and down here, you need to write an if statement seeing if it was zero, because 
maybe you just want to ask for a new number when it was zero, right? Something like that. And you can't ask for a new number when you've already given the number to divide and it has to handle the problem. Maybe it itself can ask for a new number. It just gets tricky. You see that? So where to handle this error is, is the main question. So I don't know. Where slash how should we handle the divide by zero? OK, and so that is going to haunt us until we learn about this thing called exceptions. OK, this is a new piece of syntax in C++ that will help to solve this problem to handle errors. OK, so an exception in C++, again, another fun thing that you will be able to laugh at by the end of hopefully this lecture. An exception is a special piece of syntax in C++ that signals to somebody that an error happened, an issue happened, something exceptional happened. Okay, and this is like using the word in the bad sense, the bad connotation, exceptional, like we don't like this thing. Okay, so uh, exceptions, uh, the metaphor is you have an exception, something bad happened, and then you throw it to somebody else. Okay, and the person who wants to handle this exception when it goes wrong, when it goes wrong, you throw it, and then it's somebody's job, like they have a little glove or something. I don't know how to draw a glove, I'm sorry. Uh, they catch it, okay? That's the idea, okay? An exception gets thrown, and whoever wants to handle it and deal with it catches it, okay? That, that is the idea. And... Uh, I'll show you how to throw exceptions later, but let's talk about how to handle exceptions with what is called a try-catch block, okay? So uh, you've actually already seen exceptions in the standard library, so let me show you that. I'll edit a new file called exceptions because we've talked about vectors before. And uh, if we have a vector that holds one, two, three, and you try and go and access v at index three, which is one past the end, remember this is index one, this is uh, two, and this is uh, three. Yeah, that's, sorry, zero, one, and two, right? And then index three does not exist, and so if we try and do this, it will again throw uh, a runtime error because we weren't handling this thing. But secretly, this one was an exception. Okay, so this, see this word, throwing? Uh, vector is telling us that something went wrong by throwing this thing called an exception. It's an out of range exception, okay? And then because we didn't handle it, we didn't catch it ourselves, it stops the program, okay? So uh, let's see if I wanted to say anything about that. Yeah, so secretly, vector throws uh, out of range. If something went wrong, you try to access like one past the end of a, of a vector. This is index three, which does not exist. We can't access that. And so it tries and uh, we try to access it and it throws an out of range exception when something bad happens because that index doesn't exist. And yeah, every exception, this is, this is the key, it's just a value of a type, okay? Out of range is just a type in C++. It's a special one that indicates that it's uh, an exception, but doesn't really matter. So, okay, vector will throw an out of range exception when we try to access an invalid index. Okay? And uh, because we don't handle the error, because we don't, or if we don't, catch the out, the out of range exception. C++ will treat it as a runtime error.
And of course, that'll stop the program. If we want to handle the exception, we can catch it, and the program won't end because we will have fixed the problem. OK? So what we do, the way that you handle these exceptions is to put all your code in what's called a try-catch block. And it looks like this. Uh, it looks like try. Uh, and then you have some code that might do bad things, code that might throw an exception. And then after a try comes potentially multiple catches. And you say catch, then you give like the type maybe out of range. And you usually catch it as a reference. And I'll just use E because I'm running out of space. And then you give a brace, and then you handle the exception. OK? And this will cause the code to, if anything goes wrong up here, to jump straight to here if it finds an out of range exception, for example. And you'll handle it. And then the code will just continue as usual. And there will be no runtime error because you will have fixed the problem. OK, so let us, instead of this, uh, I'm going to comment it out so that I can do it again. OK, oops, it did not copy. Try it again. There we go. So if we want to handle the exception, we have to put it in a try catch block. First comes the try, so C++, please try and do this stuff that might throw an exception. And then we say catch. And uh, here, catch needs a type. It's like a, almost a function, in a sense. It's getting the exception here. And so we can say out of range. And usually you catch it with a, a reference. I'll call it OOR for out of range. So if an out of range happens in the code from the try block, C will jump here and handle the exception for us to handle an exception. OK, so all we have to do here is say something. We could be like, OK, uh, uh oh. And that is uh, that's good enough. It's just a piece of code that executes. So normally, we do this code, but if something goes wrong, we're going to jump here and do this instead. OK, so watch the difference. We get uh-oh, and the program doesn't end with any kind of runtime error. We caught the exception, and we handled it. We said uh-oh, OK? <laughs> that is the idea. So out of range is just the type. We're catching it, calling it OOR, and uh, we're not actually using it. So that is uh, a try-catch block. And let me show you a little bit more about uh, out of range. It's defined in this header called standard accept, and if we click on it, we can see things about it. Here are people catching it. Uh, every exception, which is fun to think about, it uh, they all inherit from like logic error, which inherits from exception. Uh, every exception in C++ that gets thrown by the standard library, at least, has a special method called uh, what, which is funny. And what tells us what went wrong? It returns back a string, a C string, uh, that tells us what went wrong, which is fun. So anytime you have an exception, uh, you can say that dot what call the method to say what went wrong. Okay. So what gives you back a string? And so we can print out OOR dot what. Yeah. And that will give us information on the exception. And so you can see that uh, 
when you don't catch it, it's actually calling what for you, just to tell you before it stops the program what went wrong. But here's us catching the exception, saying uh-oh, and then printing out it's what. It's like, oh, you tried to access index 3, but the size was 3, and so the indices only went up to 2. See that? So that is uh, exceptions in a nutshell. Uh, you get to call what on them, okay? And normally, you usually catch exceptions by reference, okay? That's the idea. So back here, that was a lot, yes? So uh, let's throw our own exceptions now, okay? There is a runtime error and everybody else, like the one we just saw. Let's see if we can go back to them. Out of range exists. So everybody in standard accept is like standard exceptions that you can throw, okay? Probably the most common one that you would ever want to throw yourself is just called runtime error. It's saying that, okay, something went, went wrong at runtime. Let me make something of this class, uh, this runtime error class, to, uh, to say what went wrong. The constructor takes a string, okay? And that will be what's given back when you call what on it. So let me show you that. Uh, let's do that. Okay, so uh, let's make a new file maybe called throwing throwing our own exceptions. Throwing that CPP. Okay, so uh, let's make a function that throws a runtime error. Why not? So let's make a runtime error exception and throw it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, void throw runtime error. So let's make this uh, just. Well, I guess what we can do is we can do normal stuff up here. That's totally fine. Like hi from throw runtime error. And then we can throw it. Okay? And this is the keyword. You just say throw, and then you can throw whatever you'd like runtime error. And then the constructor for runtime error takes a string. And so we can give a string here. Okay? So what we say is like, okay, uh, from the runtime error, throw runtime error function. Something like that. Okay? So what's going to happen is this line will run, and then it's going to throw runtime error with that particular string as its what parameter. So uh, let's run it and be like, okay, let's see what happens. So again, I'm throwing, or an exception is about to happen, and we're not catching it. So it's going to close the program off, it's going to stop execution, and it's going to say, okay, an exception happened, but you didn't handle it. It was a runtime error. Uh, here's what it's what method returned back. It's like thrown from the runtime error function. Cool. And so what you have to do is you have to say try, put the thing that could throw an exception up in here, and then you catch it. Okay, and it has to be you catch the correct type. Because if I catch out of range here, nothing will happen. It's still going to not be handled because I'm not catching the right kind of exception. It's still going to stop the program because I'm not catching a runtime error. I'm catching it out of range. So you can have multiple catches. That's the catch. All right, so runtime error. R, I guess. And now we can say that we're handling it. Okay? So see out. Caught a runtime error. New line. And we can see out the what of R just for fun. And so, yeah, this should work. And here we are. Hi from throw runtime error. So this, what happens is we try to do this, try to execute it to completion, but we can't because, well, it first runs this line and then it throws a runtime error, sadly. Uh, and so it's going to jump right to here because it's going to say that, okay, I'm a runtime error. I need to be caught by somebody who can handle me. And then it executes its code. 
So call to runtime error and output R is what. Okay, and that's it. So let's make sure I'm still recording. Yes, uh, that is the idea for runtime errors. But the secret is you can throw any type and pretend that it was an exception. Okay, not just stuff from standard accept. We can throw, you could like throw 42. That's not a problem. And you can throw strings as well. Uh, though you might not want to, okay? Then it gets a little weird, but uh, you are totally able to throw any type because an exception is just you throwing some value, okay? Some value of some type somewhere, okay? So uh, let's see here. Let's make throw int and throw string functions. You can say, I don't know, hi from throw int. And then we'll throw 42, because why not? And then we'll also do throw string. And so I should include strings. And uh, a weird quirk of C++ is that I can't do this. Uh, throw blah. You cannot do this in C++ because this is not technically a string. This is a C string. So I have to wrap it in the constructor of strings to make it a real C++ string. It's just a weird quirk. Uh, but now we're throwing a real string. And now we can do more try catches. Maybe like try, uh, throw int. Okay, and then we can catch it. Usually you catch it by reference, int i. It's like, okay, see out, caught, int, and the int's value was i. It's weird, but you can do it. So it's going to execute this code and say, all right, it runs the function, tries to do it all. Say, okay, hi from throw int, it throws 42, and we caught that int down here, jump straight to here, to the catch block, and we handle it. We, we catch the 42 and we say to the user what needs to happen. Okay, so that is throw int. Let's do throw string as well. Let's, let's try that out. Let's be like, okay, not throw int, let's comment that out. Let's catch a string instead. Uh, so we can be like catch string s. And then we can handle it in a similar way. We can say caught string. And we can just print it out. Okay, so this one, we're going to go to this function. It's going to say hi from throw string. And then it's going to throw this string back to whoever is trying to catch it. We will catch that string down here and say caught string. We'll handle that exception. Okay. There we go. Caught string blah. Isn't that fun? And so it skipped over this one because it didn't catch an int. We threw a string, so it caught that string. Okay, uh, yeah. So one thing that is interesting and should be something that you remember is that when you have a try block, it's always gonna go straight to a catch block whenever the first exception gets thrown. So, for example, if I can potentially throw an int or a string, uh, but the int gets thrown first, we're never going to get to this catch block anymore. We're never even going to get to this code because it's going to throw the int and we're going to jump right out of the try block to the handler and then on with the rest of our program uh, down here. Okay, so the this is not actually going to ever throw a string. It's only ever going to throw an int, okay, from what I have right now. It's going to catch that int, high from throw int, because right here it goes straight to the catch block. once the int is thrown, okay? So just remember that it's never even gonna execute this code here. It's not gonna get to throw a string because it's only going to throw the first exception and it's gonna jump out of the try block when that happens. All right, so uh, unfortunately, if you have long try blocks with a lot of potentially exception throwing code, like maybe it doesn't all the time, but it does sometimes. Sometimes it throws an int, sometimes it throws a string, sometimes it throws a runtime error, you need a ton of catch blocks, 
Okay, you need one for each kind of exception to handle it. Okay, so that might get a bit long is all I'm trying to say there. So there might be a lot of different kinds of recovery that needs to be done depending on how many uh, try blocks there are. And so you'll need a bunch of catches. Each different kind of exception. And remember, an exception is just a type that's being thrown to you. All right. So uh, I think that is where I want to stop. So this code is not going to get executed. I should say, therefore, this code will not get executed. Uh, but if I comment it out, of course it will. OK, because it's going to throw the int first. And I think that is what I want to say. So exceptions. They are types. You can throw them, and uh, you got to catch them. Okay, you got to catch them in order to have your program not yell at you and end the whole thing when they occur. All right, so that's what I have for you now. Uh, I was promising you short lectures. You're getting that. We're going to come back. I'm going to show you a couple more slides, and then you can go and study for your midterm. Okay, so I will see you in the next lecture.